Oh, hello there. <laughs> this is the last video I'm pre-filming before we go have this baby. So it's, it's kind of bittersweet. So I'm trying to like soak in all the good vibes. Also, I'm super out of breath because of that. Anyway, uh, wow. It is time for a speed reviews and boy is it time because when I was going back on my channel to see the last time I did a speed reviews video, which is basically where a bunch of makeup I've been trying for the past month or two, I share my more finalized reviews on versus like my first impressions type videos where I'm just trying it for the first time. Anyway, it was a couple months, like it was a while ago. So I do have a playlist if you wanna watch more videos like this on new makeup I'm trying and what I think's worth it, what I think's not. We have quite a mix. We have a lot of drugstore, a lot of new launches that really just swept me off my freaking feet, you know, like, <laughs> but then also some high-end ones, some that I just don't think are worth it, some that are. You're going to see these demoed on my face today too, most of them anyway. So let's dive in. Let's start with, okay, there are two foundations I've been asked about a lot and I have touched on them in various videos in the past, but to give you kind of my finalized thoughts. First up is the one I'm wearing today. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. This has become like <laughs> the one I grab most days. And I think the reason I've been liking it for every day is just because it is a foundation. It still has some coverage. It's kind of somewhere between like light and medium, like a lithium amount of coverage. <laughs> I was going to say might, but might is an actual word, so that doesn't work. So lithium amount of coverage, but it makes your skin look pretty in real life. And I think that's why I've really ended up reaching for this because anytime I'd like catch my skin in the mirror, catch my skin, you gross. But you know what I mean? Like catch my <laughs> reflection in the mirror. I'd be like, girl, your skin looks nice. Like it really, I really like the way it makes my skin look. So I do think you can build it up a little bit to be closer to medium coverage, but it really is not gonna be super high coverage, but it's more than you maybe you think, I don't know. I feel like when this first launched a few months ago, a lot of people were like, I really, really like it. And then as more people tried it, more people were like, I'm not so sure. And I think this is just one of those foundations that's not for everyone. I mean, that could be said about every foundation ever, but it really isn't. If you want more coverage, if you want it to be more matte, if you want it to really have that thick layer, this is not gonna be for you, but I really like this for every day. I really like the way my skin looks. It's still slightly glowier, you know, nothing crazy, but mm. I do have a powder foundation on, we'll talk about in a second, that pairs really well with this if you want a little more coverage, and it's so good, you guys. Anyway, so really, really a fan of this. NARS is just one of those brands for me that most of their foundations they've ever launched, like I tend to like. So the other foundation I've gotten tons of questions about is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I really like both of these. They are very, in my opinion, very different. The more I've used them, the more and more I've realized how different they are. Whereas when I was first trying them kind of off and on, I was like, hey, I can't tell. This one is consistency wise, a little bit thicker. It's definitely more coverage. Like I think this starts at medium coverage and you can build it up a little bit more than that. It's also really pretty on the skin and it lasts all day. And I think the NARS one lasts pretty well too, but it looks a little bit more makeup-y. It's still not a crazy makeup-y. You know, there are just some foundations out there that they may coat everything and like make everything even, but they just look like makeup. This one looks more makeup-y than this, but it's still not gonna look crazy cakey or anything like that. And I think even if you have dry skin, you will like this. I've tried like the, what's the one that, the uh, Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Foundation. If you have, sorry, my daughter's preschool is sending pictures. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the day, hold on. They're painting. She loves to paint. Oh, I just love her so much. Okay, anyway, <laughs> what the heck was I saying? Oh, that airbrush flawless finish foundation did not work for me. I think it's because I have drier skin. It was like way higher coverage. This out of the line of like their more coverage foundations, this is my favorite. So love these both. They're just a little different. This is like if I'm wanting my skin to look perfect all day, like, I mean, seamless, but I'll, I will know it's gonna look a little more makeup-y than this. I, have I over explained it enough? Yes, I have. Let's move on. <laughs> I think I needed that moment to get out how I feel about these because it's taken me forever to differentiate between the two. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I literally started using them within the same week. And so my mind was like, wait, which one's which? Anyway, okay. Move on, Jessica. Well, if it isn't the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum, first of all, I was living under a rock because apparently everyone was talking about it. And so when I finally tried it, you guys were like, Jessica, how are you just now trying this? 
No idea, no idea. This stuff is incredible. The texture of it is so exactly what I like in a concealer, where it's not super thick, but it's not super thin. This one is just that medium texture. It blends so, so easily. If it sinks into fine lines like all concealers do, you can tap it right back in. Like, it's just a good one, you guys. It's a good one. I've been reaching for it a ton. And it has the kind of packaging where you can see as you use it up. There's something really satisfying about watching that thing go up. You know what I mean? You're like, ooh, yeah, I'm really loving it. <laughs> anyway, I'm really, really enjoying it. I've been applying it with either my fingers, a sponge, or a brush. But today I did it with this specific brush, the Sephora 56, which is just bigger. And man, do I like it for that. <laughs> I mean, this is just a really good combo. I feel like because this is almost like a foundation texture, and I've even heard of people using this like to kind of do spot foundation, because it is that kind of a texture, it really spreads easily. And so I feel like a larger concealer brush works really well. This is a favorite brush of mine, but anyway, love it. You guys wanna know what eyeshadow I'm wearing? This is the Wet n Wild Always Naked palette. What do I say about this? This is one of the best drugstore palettes that have launched in a very long time, like a true bigger palette. Like I've fallen in love with smaller ones, like from Essence, this nude one is really good. But I mean like a true larger, higher amount of shadows palette. This I couldn't find anywhere but on Amazon. So if you're struggling to find it in store, I can't find it in store anywhere near me. That is where I would, look if I were you, but it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. So today, I, my favorite look to do with this lately has been this shadow here, pretty much just all over the lid, blended into the crease. Sometimes I'll grab one of these mattes, doesn't really matter which, and blend it a little bit more. Not today, but some days I'll do this really light one. It's super, like that's like Wet n Wild Brulee. Remember that shadow? I feel like they took that and put it in here because this is Wet n Wild. This is a good palette, you guys. I do think there's a couple of shades that aren't like as good as the others. Obviously this one is super soft. So I like pressed it and it like sunk all the way to the bottom and then like went everywhere. So beware of that one. This one's just super glittery. I'm just not one I'm gonna reach for. But generally this is a really good palette. The quality is there. It blends super well. I don't notice creasing or anything. Like I feel like this looks like high end shadow and it was two shadows, and I really didn't even need the matte one. I feel like that shimmer blends so easily into the crease, you don't need another color, you know? Another, oh, there's so much to talk about here. I'm so, <laughs> so many. Oh, let me talk about this one I, I wasn't a fan of. So the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. If you saw my current favorites videos, my faves and fails, I think I put this one in there as a fail. I just don't get it, you guys. It's not good. <laughs> it's a very thin concealer, which that's a personal thing I don't really like thinner concealers. I feel like they end up wearing off weird throughout the day because of the thickness of it or the lack thereof. <laughs> I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with it. I felt like it wore away weird. It didn't make my under eyes look good. So it was just kind of a double whammy, double negative whammy. <laughs> so this one will eventually be decluttered from my life. Maybe it will be now, honestly, because I just not a fan. And I feel like with the idea of this being like lightweight, it says up to 30 hour wear, absolutely not. It looks awful on my under eye after like two hours. I don't know who's getting 30 hours of wear out of that. Powder foundation, the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. Y'all, I know everyone is talking about it, but this is one of those hyped products that I genuinely think is worth the hype. It's got so much coverage. I've been loving putting this just in my T-zone. This is one of those amazing products that if you get like weird bronzery lines or anything like that, that you're like, ooh, that looks a little jagged, which I mean, I get most days. This just literally with a big old brush tapping it into that area, whew, makes it look so much more seamless. This has so much coverage. So you can put this just on top of like a sunscreen and you look like you're straight up wearing foundation. Like it looks beautiful. This is just a special product that e.l.f. launched. I really think is so freaking good. And the fact that it's, I don't know the exact price point, but of course it's more of a drugstore price point is amazing. Cause this is better than some high-end powder foundations that I've tried, you know? Where did my hair go? I had some like serious volume <laughs> it go now. I no, I don't. I'm just gonna change my part to give it some volume. <laughs> Remember when my hair was really big in that video a few weeks ago? <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll look at that video and be like, what happened to me that day? So one thing that pairs so freaking beautifully with this powder foundation is this setting spray. This is the setting spray for me right now. I'm at the point where I could get rid of all the other ones I own and only have this because I feel like it actually helps with the longevity of my makeup and it makes any powderiness, it just like makes everything sink into like one layer and look really, really pretty. So it's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is, I think the smaller size, this is 1.1 fluid ounce. It's so good, you guys. It actually does what it says it's gonna do. And I've tried a lot of setting sprays and it was to the point really where I just didn't use it. Cause I was like, mm, 
Like, none of them make enough of a difference that I feel like doing this every day, but this, mm, very, very beautiful. This liquid liner from Wet n Wild is so good. It's their breakup proof liquid eyeliner. Get the waterproof. I'd heard about this and the Wet n Wild palette from Taylor Wynn, and she was not wrong. <laughs> They're both so good. And this one is super inexpensive, and I just feel like it's super black. I am a liquid liner gal. Like if I'm doing makeup, I'm probably putting on liquid liner. It does the wing so perfectly. It doesn't like bleed out. It'll go over your shimmery shadow really well and still look really black. Like it does everything I want it to do. It's technically a brush tip. I was saying in another video, I feel like brush tips and felt tips are kind of like one and the same nowadays. They, I mean, I don't really notice a difference when I'm using one versus the other, but this is really good. And it's a crazy price point for how good this is. So wanted to bring it up. Like I said, I would stick with the waterproof. I haven't tried the regular, but I have a feeling the reason this doesn't bleed is because it's waterproof. And that is important to me. So love that. Plus I just get watery eyes, you know? One product that I like but I don't know that I would buy again, is the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. I think this looks really nice on my lashes. I've worn it in recent videos, and a lot of times you guys will ask like, what are you wearing on your lashes? I really like it. It's, it's usually this. Here's the thing though. <laughs> I only opened this a little while ago, and it is already nearly dried out. And it's to the point where now when I use it, I'll get the little crusties, because it's that dry. So I feel like when you're spending 20-ish dollars on a mascara, you already know a mascara is not gonna last forever, right? Three plus-ish months, I don't know. I don't. I feel like the rule of thumb is three months. I definitely wear mine longer than that. Maybe it's more like three to six. But when it is this dry of a formula, when you first open it, it looks amazing right away. And like that first month, man, you're on cloud nine. But after that, the cloud levels just start going down and you at, you're at cloud zero in like five days. <laughs> it just gets too dry, so then it flakes everywhere. So I'm already like at the end of this, I feel like, and I just opened it like a month, a little over a month ago, I feel like. So that's a bummer, even though I do love the way it makes my lashes look really fluttery. If you're cool with spending that and only using it for like five weeks, then maybe, maybe it's worth it. I would say, honestly, it's so similar to the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. It might be a dupe for it, especially dryness level and the way it makes your lashes look. So I kind of feel like you could go that route. And even if you had to replace the Lash Paradise every five weeks, at least you're only spending like under $10 versus 20 something dollars. So these two, where did that other one go? And I don't think I have close-ups of these because I wasn't gonna bring them up, but I'm just gonna talk about them real fast so I can get them out of here. The two Physicians Formula bronzers I tried a few weeks ago. I definitely have a favorite. So if you were looking at this line they launched, I wanna say like last year, this is their butter coffee bronzer, this is their butter cake bronzer, and they had a couple more, like there's like a donut one. The butter coffee, if you're near my skin tone, is gonna be the perfect bronzer tone for you. I think this is so beautiful. It blends really easily. It really is a good bronzer. Even the formula I think is nice. It blends easily. It stays really well. It definitely has a coffee, a sweet coffee kind of smell to it. The butter cake one I think is also pretty. It's just tends to be a little bit deeper than what I like. So looking at a swatch of these side by side, there's the butter cake, there's the butter coffee. So the coffee I feel like tends to just be a little bit less orange and just a little bit lighter so i like the way it ends up looking plus it's even because it's all one tone once you get past that first layer of i don't even remember what the overspray was however the butter cake is pretty you know if you have a deeper skin tone or you know this is a better bronzer color for you i do think this formula is nice you just because it is in like a striped format you know you really want to kind of blend it but it has a little bit of shimmer to it, whereas the butter coffee ha is matte. So that's another thing. If you're looking for more of a shimmery one, I would go with the butter cake. So I like both. I think the quality of both is good. It's just more of a what shade do you need kind of a thing, you know? The butter cake, smell-wise, has a lot less of a smell. Neither of these smells are crazy strong, but this is like slightly sweet, but it's not a super obvious smell. <laughs> now, speaking of obvious smells, the Physician's Formula Butter Blush. Holy moly. This is the strongest smelling thing I think in my collection, <laughs> but I am wearing it today and I think it's a really pretty blush, but I just wish, I know some people like this smell. I know that. It's their Matte Minoy Butter Blush. This one is in mauve Mattes. I do think, first of all, it's not an overspray on this one. It's actually color all the way down, which is nice. Oops. And I wish that Physicians Formula did that more often because a lot of times it's an overspray and then it's just gone. Like that strawberry one I keep eyeing, but I don't think I'm gonna buy it because the strawberries are gone. <laughs> anyway, so I really, really like the way it looks. If you kind of cater to the lower area, you get more of like what you're seeing on my cheeks, but you can definitely get it deeper by going up into the upper area. So I think it's kind of cool that it's customizable in that way, but 
yeah, it just has that really strong scent that apparently is the scent of the flower this is based on, but whew, it is strong. And their Matt Minoy bronzer has that same smell. It's a good bronzer though, but whew. I have to be choosy. Like if I were in my first trimester, there is no freaking way I would survive wearing this all the time. Okay, mascara that I think is amazing. And this is the first Milani mascara I've liked, <laughs> like I think ever. It's their anti-gravity mascara. I really like this. As I was applying it today, I was really thinking like, what is it about this I like? I think that it's the fact that it, it separates and volumizes and curls and I don't, it doesn't flake or anything, but it's the fact that it's not a super wet formula and it's not a super dry one. So I feel like you can actually work with it. So you can put on multiple layers because it's kind of, again, at that medium dryness moisture level. <laughs> the things that I say in these videos would make no sense to someone that doesn't know anything about, you know what I mean? Like you guys know what I'm talking about, but like half of the things I'm saying make no sense. <laughs> I just really like the way it looks and I feel like you have time to build it up if you want to which I like to it's easy to apply it has a super bendy wand I don't love but it hasn't really bothered me so much as I've been applying it so in the end it's not really a big deal you know highly recommend probably will buy again because I'm liking it that much although I have plenty of mascaras right now but in the future if I were picking one up from the drugstore this would be up there this is definitely if I'm comparing it to the essence lash extensions mascara with the purple tube and then the black lid that's like my favorite drugstore mascara that one I think is a little bit more volumizing which some people don't want like if you want them to look like what you're seeing here I would get the Milani one. If you want them to be even more black and volumized, get the other one. So this is one I knew I'd get a lot of questions about once I tried it. It's the M Cosmetics Serum Blush in Rose Milk. First of all, my packaging doesn't work. This is the second M Cosmetics product I got in that order that the packaging just do doesn't function. It's supposed to be a dropper and it doesn't suck anything up in it. It's like whatever's in there is just trapped. I can see it in there. I don't know. Maybe I need to mess with it more. So anyway, just kind of bizarre, but the product itself is really pretty. Do I think if you were only wanting to order this, cause you have to order M Cosmetics on their site. If this were all you're going to order, do I think it's worth placing an order just for this? I'm not so sure. I do think it's gorgeous, but unless you're wanting to buy like, I mean, I'm not talking about these today, but their freaking palettes are my like favorite ever. This one, oh my gosh, I can link this below and wrote on. It's so pretty. So if you are placing an order for more than one product, I think it might be worth it, but I don't know. But this is really pretty. And especially if you're someone that you tend to try liquid and cream blushes and you feel like they're too pigmented or you just don't have enough time to blend it in before it starts looking weird. This shears out so beautifully. You have so much time. You can layer it up. Like you can't really screw it up. And I think that's why I really like it. It's so milky and sheer and different than most of the other ones I've tried. So I do like it. I tend to just use my finger because I think a brush or a sponge would soak it up too much because it is more sheer. But a brush, I, I don't know. I just haven't really tried it with that. But a finger, I think, is the move. So L'Oreal launched this new line of these gloss bombs. And I can't find my original one. I thought it was in my purse and it's not in there. I literally can't find it. But this is the second one I bought in Rosy Utopia. I kind of put this on top of the lip stuff I'm wearing right now. I'm wearing Iconic Nude from Charlotte Tilbury. And then Maybelline Warm Me Up cream lipstick. You guys know this is like my favorite drugstore line of lipsticks. It's so good, you guys. Anyway, so those two together look really pretty, but then I put this on top, but just a little bit in the, I didn't want it to be too pink since I did go kind of bronze for the eyes. But this formula is just that classic, like ridiculously comfortable, wear it all year round, keep it in your purse, kind of a glossy balm. Like there's no better way to describe it. It does not have that L'Oreal scent, I know. I was wondering, I'm like, please don't have that scent. And it doesn't, it doesn't have that scent. And I'm so glad. So the other shade I have is lighter than this. It's called Feathery Fleur. Can't find it. <laughs> Love it though. Uh, but Rosie Utopia is a really pretty, again, as we're in spring right now, I feel like this is the most perfect pink that's not pink pink, kind of a gloss that you could be wearing. Like it's just so beautiful. So I own, in theory, two shades. I could see myself buying more because I love it. Totally up my alley. All right, that's it. Ah, there are honestly more I could talk about, but some that I weeded through and took out a few because I was like, some of these I do need to try a little bit more before I blast it out in a video how I feel because I'm still not totally sure. For example, these uh, Physicians Formula Little Palettes, I wanna use some more before I talk about them. 
I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about the L'Oreal True Match Nude. I think I like it. So anyway, just things that I, I still need time on. But I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, if you want to watch more of this style of video, I'll link my playlist. You can binge watch them if you'd like. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed and I hope you subscribe, stick around. I've got a lot of fun videos planned for future months that I'm really excited about. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.